well, this isn't what we planned, but this is uh, some much needed follow up. Well, it's like the news, right? They don't necessarily know going into it. It's not like they have the stories pre-planned. Uh, something goes down and that's why it goes on the news, right? They cut into your, into your, they used to cut into your usual scheduled programming, right? You'd be watching golf or, or, or something about how they make bowling balls and some people would cut in. And uh, that was, I mean, that was the news. Now it's different, I guess, because of the internet, but that's, that's how we're going to run it. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to follow up with uh, the solution we did yesterday where we were talking about how to avoid applications during ESP. So it turns out this could cause some issues for you waiting for the app forever based on how you're deploying. So, so we're going to look at how to get around that today. This is breaking news. What did it break? Right? It break, broke the show you were watching, I guess. Solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so excuse me for cutting right into the middle of this autopilot deployment. Well, it's going to be an autopilot deployment, but we got to make a few different changes. So, so yesterday we took our Google Chrome app, right, and we added a requirements rule for it. So we ran a script, right, and this was the script, and it basically said if we are not in the out of box experience. It basically said, if the out-of-box experience is complete, go ahead and install the app. If it's not complete, don't install it, right? Um, because we didn't want it interfering with ESP, and this worked. It definitely kept the app out. The problem was we were getting the not applicable status, which is kind of what we wanted, right? It was kind of good. If you deployed to all devices, uh, devices that were at the desktop would get it, and devices that were going through Ubi would not. However... Uh, what the way Intune works now is if something is not applicable, right, it's not going to retry at some point, right, and do it again, which means if the app did land during Ubi and try to install and it got flagged as not applicable, you're never going to get it. You'd have to go make it available in the company portal or do something else. So using the same script, I want to show you a different way to do this where we can use the uh, install logic and the detection itself uh, to control when the app comes down. And if something fails, it's going to try again. So take a look at the way I did it now. So if you look at this app here, uh, two devices installed just fine and two, it was not detected. And that's because of the logic we have um, where I'm not running it if we're in Ubi. So here, I'm going to kick one of these off while we talk. All right, so let's sign in as Morty. And we should only have two apps in the ESP. All right, so I want to show you what I did here. Um, this was the script from yesterday. Uh, is Ubi complete? Let's go ahead and open this in code. Yes, this was the script we used. Um, but what I want to do is instead of making this requirements, I want to make this part of the install. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new folder and we're going to kind of build the app from the ground up. So we'll call it Google Chrome. And I have the Google uh, Enterprise MSI we're going to put in here. OK, now what we're going to do is we're also going to make a script called install chrome.ps1 and let's open this now with code now right off the bat we can copy what we already have so we can just put the first part right in there um, i'm actually going to make a small a uh, small change i'm going to put void here instead and we can get rid of that uh, output there so we can close this now we don't need that anymore um Okay, so what we're going to do is a few things. First, we're going to add our log function because we want to be able to see what happens. Uh, so function log that takes our parameter string message uh, time equals get date format format. MM, HHMMSSTT. It's our date format. And then we're going to put output equals uh, time and the message. And then we will write the output of output. All right, that's our log function. 
All right, so we want to start the log. So we'll say log file equals, we'll put this with the Intune stuff. See program data, Microsoft, Intune, management extension, logs. And we'll call this Chrome installer dot log. Okay, if it's not there, if not test path log file, we'll create it. So we'll do a new item, path is log file, item type is a file, force, out null. And we'll start the transcript. As always, this will be available down below in the GitHub link in the video, um, in the details, just, uh, I know a lot of you like when I walk through it, so you could always skip this and just go download, uh, the new version and go to the next part where I show you how it works. So we're going to add type. Uh, oh, we already did that part Add the type type definition. Okay, so you already did that part. So now what we can do is we can say, let's start with the variable. So we're going to log the is ubi complete variable is equal to is ubi complete. Now we're going to do, okay, if it's not complete, what we'll do is we'll say ubi is not complete skipping Chrome install. And then what we'll do is we'll exit zero um, and then Intune will retry later. That's why we're doing that. Um, because and a failure, as long as we're not exiting one, um, it's like it just bows out, right? So it, it, it'll retry again. It has a protocol for that, okay? Now, obviously, if it is true, um, if it's complete, we're going to proceed with the install. So we'll do a, we'll log ubi complete installing Chrome. And we're just going to manually install the, uh, the MSI file. So start process file path, PS script root. And there it is. That's the full name of the file. We're going to add some arguments, so it'll be a QN. And then we'll do a wait and a no new window. So nothing pops up very easy. And then we'll log Chrome installation completed. Stop transcript exit zero. All right. So what we'll do with that is we have it. We're going to use our uh, content prep tool. Let's pull that up here. Microsoft content prep tool. You can put it in the same directory. It doesn't matter. Um, the current directory, the source file is uh, still point to the MSI because it'll give you all the information, even though we're going to use the setup uh, PowerShell to do this. OK, so let's let's talk about uploading this. So we'll go to apps. We'll create. Win32, select the package file. Uh, what do we have here? Desktop, Chrome, Google Chrome. There it is. Okay, got all your information. You need a publisher. Do an icon if you want. I'm going to be lazy and not do it here. Replace the MSIX with a PowerShell script. So it'll be PowerShell.exe, execution, policy, bypass dot backslash what did we name it install chrome install chrome dot ps1 install chrome dot ps1 uh you can leave everything else the same and we could even leave the msi uh for the rule and and again the thing is it'll try again if it fails it's not like a not applicable apparently so this is a little bit more dynamic um, I'm still going to do all devices next, and then you click create. So I've done that. I have Google Chrome here, um, and we can see it's, uh, it's definitely going quite a bit. So, uh, if I head over here to this machine, this was the Ubi machine. It got to the desktop. 
Um, let's see what's going on here. So if we go to the logs, we see Chrome installer. So this is exactly what happens, right? Uh, transfer output file is Ubi complete variables false. It's not complete skipping install, right? It's going to keep trying and come down again. Uh, let's go to, oh, actually it looks like it is here. That's good because then that would mean we still get it. So it tried again after it showed the failure, not really keeping it out completely like if it were not applicable. So this really comes down to, it's just, just a shame the not applicable is like a final status. Um, there's other things we could do. You could reapply the assignment, right? Take the device out of the group, put it in or, or unassign the group from the app and reassign it. But uh, honestly, that seemed like it would have been a lot of upkeep, a lot of graph stuff. And this way, we're just kind of changing where the logic is. So I think it makes more sense to see a failure initially, and then knowing that Intune's going to go back and reattempt the install. And by adding the logs in that area, you know what we can do. We can just collect the logs from Intune and make sure that that's the reason. Um, and the good news is it will come down eventually. So, you know, the first method is really only good for items that we absolutely don't want to apply to new devices, right? That would technically work, but this is just going to keep things a little more dynamic. Let me know uh, your experience. Thanks for reaching out after seeing yesterday's uh, video. There was a lot of good feedback, but that was pointed out. So I do appreciate that and we'll be seeing you.